Hello, folks. Welcome to the Land Tamer stream. It is Monday night. Pull up your cup of coffee. Uh, wish for the good bits. And let's talk a little bit about networking, shall we? Um, let's talk about some Wireshark. We're going to talk about Mars quakes. As a matter of fact, if you see this, this is cool. So I read about this thing's launching May 5th. NASA's new um, rover. Go to Mars, it'll be able to drill. Uh, cool stuff. You know, I got to introduce some astronomy stuff. Uh, nerd it out. Always going to nerd it out. Um, anyway, that's that's pretty cool, right? I can't wait to watch that on May 5th. Uh, that launch. That is on an Atlas V rocket, by the way, from the West Coast. I believe is where that will be launching. So this is the um, chat window. Anybody wants to say hello on this Monday night? You know, it's, t it's time to start our week, folks. It's time to start our week of study labbing certifications time to it's one countdown a day closer i'm on 41 days hey how's it going uh show good to see you my friend francisco good to see you too good to have you all here tonight on monday night looks like y'all are focusing on uh getting fired up for some learning and getting ready to pass those exams in the future right it's awesome yeah, the Insight Lander is what this thing is called. So, and uh, it's going to check for Mars quakes. I never thought of, I learned that word today. Uh, obviously, it's not an earthquake on Mars. It's a Mars quake. But let's talk about uh, networking, guys. Uh, quick update on the written study. It's going to be a brief vlog. I do have a little bit of Wireshark goodness. Um, but I did pass, finally. Yesterday, at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. I got a, I got just enough time. I had to do an airport run last night, but I had just enough time in the afternoon to do another boson exam, and I passed. Uh, let me pull up the screenshot here. Got it somewhere. Boson's got it some folder now. Uh, sort by date. Yeah, I've got a lot of screenshots here, stuff I'm working on. Oh, shoot. I thought I had it. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, I scored an 880. So I will say the speed drills was key for me. I mean, especially some of those where you had to, you know, they give you a series of blocks that you have to fill in and move the blocks over. Um, man, those speed, that speed drill spreadsheet really helped me on that. Um, hey, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is actually the first time I've passed, <laughs> to be honest. Which, of course, as you know, as you very well know, show that I could take it again. I plan on taking it again tonight, immediately following the stream. And I may fail, right? Because there's such a variety of things. So I plan to do this as often as I can up until um, the actual exam, 41 days. But also what I'm doing is I'm noting things that I miss uh are you awesome show yeah man i i think especially towards the end i'm really gonna be scrambling it in both on um and okay awesome yeah as soon as we well so i'm gonna do the spanish um vlog at about 7 30 that won't take too long this vlog won't won't take very long and so i'll be starting about 7 45 we'll see how we do my friend uh, but yeah, I think this really helped. And I posted this on Instagram today, like a video showing me filling this, this whole thing out. But I changed some of the colors last night and added a few more questions in here, or not questions, but a few more tables. Uh, so good question, Francisco. The Boson Simulator is available to order and download like immediately. Um, I used to have the link. Yeah, just go to boson.com, and you can order it here and download it. Yep, there you go. Um, I need to make you a mod also, a show. And I forget how to do it. Okay, sweet. Now you're mod. Um, so you can post whatever. Uh, but yeah, you can go here, download it, and... I used it for the CCMP, not all the exams, because I found out about it when I was getting ready for the T-shoot. 
So I didn't use it for the other exams, but I used it for the T shoot, and it was great. Um, they had the, yeah, for CCIE, they only have the written, of course. You could download a demo too. And then this is what I bought 400 101. And again, like I was saying, if you will be taking the written, what is it, after August 31st, when they update the evolving technologies section from 1.0 to 1.1, I guarantee you that Boson will be updating it pretty quickly. Um, I have updated, I mean, um, yeah, the links are really good. Yeah, August 31st show. So I tell you, when I launch Boson, like once out of every three times or four, well, once every few days, it prompts and says there's an update available for this exam. I don't know what that means. I haven't really seen any new questions over time, but I'm pretty sure that they will keep it up to date. It's very reputable. Yeah, sure thing, Francisco. Um, and it's, it's going to be key to my passing, I think. And others will tell you the same. So yesterday, uh, this is not the latest, but I added a couple more sections here. Some multicast IPv6 addresses. Um, I added, and again, this is the regards the drive share, Google drive share. Let me just pull it up. I'm pretty much editing as I go here. And this is under cheat sheets. Just I need to change the name of that. People will say I'm cheating. This has nothing to do with cheating. <laughs> um, written drills. So yeah, I added some VRRP stuff, SNMPv3 security levels. I still don't completely understand this. So I'm going to be reviewing this tonight before I take the exam again. Um, hey, dude, for him. Good to have you, man. Glad to have you here in the chat. She so took the switch last month. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, the switch is the, uh, it's funny. Um, I also did the switch first before route. A lot of people do, hey, the business here. Um, yeah, I, I do, a lot of people take route first and then switch and then T shoot. I was, I was in my past life so much more familiar with switching that I took switch then route and switch. I, I did pretty good on the score. Route, I, ha I had a lot more trouble with. Had less experience in routing. And then the T-Shoot, I actually got 100 on the T-Shoot. Yeah, same, yeah, dude for him. Yeah, Show, he did route. I know Show does a lot of routing uh, in his day-to-day. -day. So yeah, I added this in here. And what I also did is on the second page, I made it a different color. So that you can switch back and forth easily, more easily, and compare the answers. Switch first, then route, and finally T-shirt, T-shoot. Yeah, Francisco, that's uh, that's what I did as well. So tonight I'm going to do another full exam. I'm going to do some more memory drills and just keep on doing that, folks. I mean, it took me about, you know, you get uh, two hours timed, I think. Uh, it's, it's taking me a lot less than two hours, like a little over an hour, I think, to finish. So if I keep going at this rate, I'll be able to practice quite a few times before the actual exam. So again, uh, about Cisco Live, folks, I re haven't really had much time to plan that yet. And I think I have, there's some Router Gods events too, and they have a quick meeting to talk about that. So I'll probably plan this next week, uh, but we'll definitely plan a meetup for any of that are going to be at Cisco Live uh, even shoot, even if we have to grab lunch somewhere, uh, we'll definitely, definitely get together and hang out. Uh, Spanish language streams. Again, I am, I am going to, to continue that. So at 7:30 tonight, I'll kick off the Spanish language stream. A couple people missed it yesterday, said that they wanted to, um, definitely tune in. So we'll see how it goes. And then, uh, just a quick reminder, if you're not familiar with this, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link your Amazon Prime to Twitch, and you get one free sub a month. And uh, you just click that sub button if you um, have that and would like to try it out. It would help support, support the stream. We'll buy new gear, add new stuff. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Wireshark. So I knew about this plugin. I even posted about it at the last release, which was 2.6.0, I think. 
was that last week? Yeah, it was last week. Of course it was. So I even read about that, but you know, I've never actually used it until today. And I forget why it was that I actually used it. Oh, I think because I loaded Wireshark on my work PC and it prompted me, uh, by the way, you need to upgrade, right? So I went and I upgraded it and then I did a PCAP on a Wire. I, I do this all the time. I mean, I, I do PCAPs on Wireshark all the time. Uh, I'm sorry, I do PCAPs on F5s uh, all the time. But I've never really understood the significance of the plugin and the Ether trailer feature that it, that it's now included. I guess before 2.6, you'd have to d um, download the plugin separately and load it into Wireshark. But now it's integrated. It's disabled by default. And that's why I checked it earlier today. So essentially, I think I have this on screenshot here. Yeah. This link, by the way, goes to Dev Central. You have to have an account to view this link. So anyway, like I says, it is disabled by default to enable it. I had this look, to look this up today. Um, and I'm going to go through that real quick because, man, this actually helped me today. And I just hit my head on the screen. You ever do that? You ever figure or find something that you just kind of ignored for a long time or thought, I need to research that. Um, let me see how to do that. And you never did. You never took the time to do it. And then when you figure out the feature, you're like, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I could have so used this before in the past. That has happened to me so many times. It seems like a lot of new stuff that I learn really that's my reaction. Like, it's funny, when I was reading the, some of the books when I just started the CCIE journey, and I was reading through, yeah, when I, when I was reading through the, uh, some of the TCP fundamentals books, uh, TCP Volume 1, um, I was like, gosh, how, do, how was I even a network person before, not having read this and knowing this? Uh, but you try to take a positive spin on not get too hard on ourselves, right? Uh, we don't want to get, you never want to feel like you have imposter syndrome, right? Because we're all learning. But man, it was, it was great. But let me get right to it, guys. This is the, so I've got Wireshark open. I've got an actual PCAP that's from like 2016. Uh, it's an old version of F5. But it was just something I was playing around. And so what F5 does for you is, well, the F5 trailer feature, let me show you how to get to it. And if you go to Analyze, Enable Protocols, and then you can search for F5. And this is not, File Info is enabled by default. That's a top packet that will tell you basically the TCP dump command that you ran on the F5. Like, that's cool. But if you hit the F5 Ethernet trailer, Click OK, it'll actually recalculate even the PCAP that you have open. And then what it does, so this is the F5 info. And it'll tell you the TCP dump command that you had to use from, you know, you go to F5, you type bash, and you put in your parameters here. Um, it tells you the version of F5 that you're running, the platform. Like I said, I think this was uh, uh, old. I mean, we're so past this upgrade. Um, It'll tell you the host name. Of course, I've changed all this. I sanitized this. That's another story I'm going to talk about in a minute. If you ever need to, to anonymize your PCAPs, uh, it's pretty easy to do. Well, I say easy. It's not super easy. It's, it's a little tedious. Um, but yeah, so you could go in here, and then if you click on regular, here's a TLS packet. Um, it shows you, by the way, TMM0. So this is a TMM capture, right? The TMM uh, daemon running on the F5, which is basically the LTM, right? And then it has all your normal um, encapsulations. And then at the end, it has the F5 Ethernet trailer, which I don't understand. I've never researched this. I want, I want to look at it. I mean, you can look at it in binary and basically see that somehow at the end of the, it's putting a trailer on the packet, either the packet or the frame. I'm not sure which. 
But what it does is it tells you a lot of details about uh, the traffic. So, so it has a slot, TMM. It has the VIP name. And then under medium details, it has trailer length. This is some of the trailer details here. Um, and then it has... This is a really cool feature because sometimes it's hard to know. All right, people will ask me, we'll be troubleshooting some devs, and I'll be on a dev F5. And I'll say, okay, can you tell me which, which node is this hitting, right? Um, and, of course, I've changed this, but the peer local is essentially um, the server node that is on the other end of this conversation and the peer remote so good good information in here folks uh and a peer vlan peer ip protocol bunch of good stuff in here so anyway uh, i've i've needless to say i've looked at i don't know how many dozens of pcaps f5 pcaps without using this plugin and anyway now now i know and that's one way kind of that this stream has helped me because ordinarily I may have not paid so much attention. Wireshark it makes it look more like a header instead of a trailer. Yeah, indeed. But I was looking at the, like the, the X code. And when you click on the, like the details, notice where this is located in the stream. It's almost like it's right here at the end. I don't know how many bytes that is. Anyway, really cool stuff. Don't you guys just love Wireshark? Love you, Wireshark. Um, I'm going to get a little pillow at night with Wireshark on there. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's most of you guys. Anyway, so if you need to anonymize, so let's say like me, you're going to stream something. And obviously you need to take some data and scramble it up a little bit, remove information that you don't want to stream to the entire world. Um, it wasn't hard to do. There was, I did some Google searches and also went on Discord and asked, and people were saying, um, use wire edit, which it is great. It works fine. But I was trying to do this natively on the Mac and I downloaded wire edit on the Mac and would not recommend it. Like it runs in Wine, and it kind of locked up on me. I couldn't even get it to run on this Mac. So all I did was I loaded a uh, my Windows virtual machine and booted up there, and then I had to kind of switch, put my Windows, arrange them side by side, open Wireshark here, look for the text, and then I had to search and replace. And that's the thing for a lot of things in Wireshark, uh, for in PCAP format, you're not going to be able to search just for the text or the IP address. A number of things you have to convert to hex, search for the hex. Then you had to do a hex conversion of the text you want to replace it with and do find replace hex hex. And that worked fine. It was a little tedious, but it was a learning experience and uh, good stuff. I'm sure in the security forums, the guys know about this uh, all the time, know how to do this. Uh, anyway, anything else I got? I think that's about all I got, folks. Um, yeah, so just coming up this week, uh, I guess let me go over that. I'm going to be, again, trying to hit, uh, show when is your exam? I'm curious if you rescheduled it or are you still, I don't know if you're still on here, um, or is it coming up soon? Because, you know, I still have 41 days, and what I think what I've decided to do is, you have not, so it's coming soon, right? Next week, is it? Last time I talked to you, I think you had 16 days to go. Uh, actually, that may have been two weeks ago. I uh, think you might take it in Cisco Live. Oh, I thought you had scheduled already. Ah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, 41 days. So for me, that feels pretty comfortable right now, to be honest, because on Saturday, I failed... And yesterday I passed, but, you know, it wasn't 100. I still missed like 10 questions. So I'm still feeling kind of on the border. But 41 days, I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm feeling like if I do this two or three or four times a week, 
And then the things that I miss um, that I study really hard and I do, you know, research and understand, uh, like the SNMP V3, uh, auth, no priv, no auth, no priv, uh, that kind of thing. Really study those cases and get to understand it. I think I'll be in pretty good shape. I'm actually f feeling pretty confident compared to like a month ago about the, about the exam. So it's a good feeling. Um, so yeah, I'll, that's kind of my plan. I do plan to take a few days off. Oh, good question. Dude for him is wondering if uh, a lot of people like to take CCIE exams at Cisco Live. Is it cheaper or something? So I'm a little bit of a cheapskate. Um, it is. And I'll tell you why, because of course the the route switch written is 400. I'm pretty sure all of them are. Uh, I can't be confident on that, but so it's 400 bucks. And if you buy admission to Cisco Live, that includes one free exam. Um, so if you want to take your basically any uh, what is it, Prometric or or whatever the company is, essentially any or 450 for CCIA, I think uh, show says. Yeah, if you buy a full conference pass, exactly. Among the different passes, if you get the full conference pass, Pearson View, thank you, show. Um, there used to be another one. Uh, it, there used to be another testing provider, but now it's all Pearson View, I believe. But yeah, so, hey, you know, my company in this case, it's, and I was on the fence. I was considering uh, purchasing my own pass this year because of this community that I've come to know and through the stream and all the people that I've met in the, in the discords and in router gods and all that, I was really wanting to go. So I was considering funding it myself, but for the first time my employer offered to pay. So with that came a free exam. They do not do the lab there. Yeah. Um, actually I've heard a show, uh, who was it? Jedediah Casey posted something Necrocube on Twitter that, uh, oh, that's something different. Yeah, he posted that he is taking a lab practice. So apparently your employer can use, um, uh, yeah, actually in Router Gods too, they talked about this. So there are some, there is a way to take a sample lab, I think, at Cisco Live. It doesn't count. It's like a practice lab exam. I don't know a whole lot about it. Don't quote me on this either, but I've heard actually two people talk about it. Um, yes, yeah, so you can trade them for a lab attempt. And I think even at Cisco Live, uh, people were talking about there are some labs you can take, but they're um, right at a testing center. I'll, I'll have to find out more about that, do for him. Um, I'll ask. Someone commented about it in, in another forum. and But the, they were commenting that there were so many seats and that they were all taken. And he is hoping that someone uh, didn't show up or canceled their trip to Cisco Live and that he would have a chance. But again, I don't think it's the full lab. And, and it doesn't count. I think it's like a practice lab, I believe. I know, guys, that there are a lot of uh, Cisco Live. I'm not a pro. This would be my first year. I've never been. But there are a lot of paid programs that are happening on Sunday. I think, show you might be going to one um, where they do workshops, uh, seminars. They do some hands-on stuff. I think one of those things includes like a uh, sample or a practice lab. Um, but again, I don't know all the details. I hope to learn a lot more about that and report back to you guys. I've been to Aruba's in Las Vegas and never a Cisco event. Yeah, I've never been to Cisco event. I've been to um, Citrix. I've been to Microsoft. I've been to IBM. Um, but I'm really looking forward, really looking forward to this one. So, yeah, guys, thanks so much for dropping in. I think we're going to drop uh, here and uh, appreciate all everybody coming by. It's Monday night, guys. So hopefully you're, you've got your week ahead of you. you got what you're planning to do in mind. You got your schedule set. What times you're going to be working on your labs or, or studying for a written, whatever the case may be. And uh, 
Uh, how do I know which countries I take the lab exam in? Yes, there are, there is a list, and I think uh, that's a good question. Um, I do not know. I know people who have told me different places that they have taken it. Um, Dubai, you have heard of Dubai, Brussels. Yeah, no people taken in Brussels, Hong Kong, US two locations. They used to have a mobile lab also. Um and I don't know how active that is or where all that goes. Um Oh, here we go. CCI lab location. So this is US of course. Uh Bangalore, India. Oh, here we go. Yeah, apparently there are and of course, a lot of these are going to be RTP is probably where I will take it. Yeah, I think the big issue is uh, has to do a lot with proctors, probably. Yeah, mobile labs. Um, so here's a lot of mobile lab locations. Now, I've heard mixed reviews on the mobile labs. Um, in terms of issues with, with the lab itself and the gear and, uh, you know, the setup, the keyboard, whatever, I uh, have heard issues about that. Uh, this is wireless, by the way. Wow. There's a lot of locations for wireless. I guess we'd have to change to the correct, um, but anyway, yeah, you could, you can look those up. Should be plenty of locations for you there. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for hanging out in the chat. Keep getting those good bits. Keep studying hard. We shall see you back here tomorrow night in the Land Tamer stream. And uh, keep on laughing, folks. Learning every day. Take care, guys.